Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen today. I titled this message on making children independent early in life, making children independent early in life. With so much happening with marriages, with families, with workplaces, yes, for some of you all, I know you want to keep children on this path of just innocence, fun, spending up your money to do whatever they want to do. But at the end of the day, we know that it can't be always like it is today. It can't always be you, the sole provider, the one who sons and daughters are leaning on. It can't continue to be this way. The revelation was given to me via God himself. I didn't have to sit down and listen to financial gurus. I didn't need to pick up phones and talk to family members or go to forums and ask their opinion on. God himself spoke to me and he said something along the lines of, I'm just paraphrasing and summarizing, but it is time to direct your children toward their own finances. The chore money that they received periodically, it was helpful in meeting their needs, but that chore money was coming out of money that was allocated toward bills that needed to be paid. There was never enough money in the till, so to speak, where I could just totally wipe out my own debt. So you know how it goes. Minimum payments or double in payments or wiping some debt out, but not all of it. Jobs come, jobs go. You have to pivot to meet other people's needs. Come on. You have to make sacrifices to meet other people's prayer requests. Mm -hmm. Some of you all know what I'm talking about. And so you start thinking about how much you're doing for children. How much you may be doing for people who are not children, but they're adults. And yes, the handouts for a certain time period were beneficial to that person. But when do you cut off the giving? When do you, when do you get to a place where you say, children, you are of the age where you can be able to seek all sorts of ways to make money. Here's a video. Here's a resource. Go talk to some of your other family members and friends and ask them if they can be able to help you because we can't. A family member loses a job. A family member is sick. A family member has their share of debt. I can't help you any longer. Somebody needs to have that dialogue. Quit pretending as if you got this, that the children don't need to know, that we want children just to be children. And, you know, I know what I went through when I was younger and you better stop. The Lord spoke to me. He told me, he said that there comes a point where they have to work. Personal life experience experiences change situations. It's not going to always be the way it always is. Enjoy this time when they are very young. And we did. Lots of video. Lots of laughter. Lots of crying. Lots of yelling. But now, they're at the age where they're telling you what they want, how they want it, when they want it. It's time. 
They're at the age where they're saying that this cost and that cost, and I need this and I need that. And I've already done the research on it. And they know how to put in all of your credit card numbers. <laughs> and they know how to ask this one and ask that one. And they know how to do all sorts of chores in the household, as well as outside. They're also a part of all sorts of sports activities. And you mean to tell me that, oh no, oh no, we don't want them to make any money for themselves. Robbing them of vital life experiences. If you give me everything, am I really going to appreciate it? I mean, let's just be honest with ourselves. If I give you everything that you want, everything, okay? I speak to the Lord. We open up a portal, if you will, of nothing but everything coming to you. Everything that meets every single need. What do you learn? How do you grow? When it runs out, what you going to do? You're going to come back. You're going to say, hey, you know what? Whatever you said, whatever you did to the Lord, can you just open that back up again, please? Because <laughs> I'm a little light on some cash, light on some property, light on some fame, some fortune. Can I tell you that there are individuals that, oh, yeah, they've tapped into all sorts of systems, process, you name it. And everything has been coming so quickly for them. And it's been a nice ride. And it's sure good not to think about, oh, I, you know what? How am I going to meet this bill? The Lord spoke to me in a quiet voice the other day and said, what happens when all of your bills are paid? Zero on everything. What happens then? I said, I don't, I don't really know other than the fact that there's a lot of things that I still want to accomplish. Good. Now, had I answered any other way, like, well, that means I'm going to sit back and I'm going to chill, relax, you know, um, take some of my blessings and give them to children. Do you think, do you think that God would assist me? I did something similar years ago when there were zero balances where I didn't have to do too much of anything. And what I did was when the blessings had come, I was like, you know what? I said, let me just try this. Let me do this. Let me do that without a plan. At that point, it becomes wasteful spending. That's where some of you all are. You could have money if you wouldn't waste. If you wouldn't just Oh, I'm just going to give to Nancy, give to Bobby, give to Tina. Is there a plan in your giving? I'm just going to, I don't know. I'm just going to interview the children. Yeah, the holidays are coming up. See what they want. Did they earn anything? I mean, the teacher's having problems with them. Their grades are not so good. They're dating whoever, whatever. They're dressed any old kind of way. You have these conversations with them about, life and moral responsibilities and they laugh and they think that what you're saying is just funny should you be giving them whatever they want whenever they want however they want just because of an age when you know they're way past the age of understanding and they could pretty much run your household without you <laughs> wow yeah it's time for somebody to get a job, whether online, offline, working with a family member or a friend. Oh, but I don't want to deal with the fight, someone says. I don't want to deal with the arguing. I don't want to deal. With, oh, you're going to have those fights. God's not going to take that away from you. You're, you will have those fights. You will need to get in somebody's face. You will need to strip rooms if you have to. You will need to take phones away. Oh, it's going to get ugly quick. Because I was used to you just letting me do whatever. I mean, you were always working. Ooh, that was another issue. The Lord says that. How can you tell these children what to do when you're always working? 
well, I'm their parent. No, no, no. You've got to earn respect, earn trust. You've got to play the role of parent. You haven't been playing a role of parent. You've been playing the role of employee. That's what they see. They see a person prepping for work. They see a person preparing lunch for work. They see a person walking out the door, getting into a car, and going to a job, and giving eight to ten hours to someone outside the home. How can you tell me what to do? How can you enforce rules and do all of these things when I barely see you? Because once they get that revelation and fear is casted out, I no longer fear you either. They're going to say whatever and do whatever. You got to be present among those children long enough to show them that you mean business. That you've got to take your rightful place as a parent. Some of these children got more respect for the older sibling, for the grandmother, for everyone else, because they're present, because they're engaged, because they're not only doing for them, but they're expecting children to do for them as well. My grandmother, she had this dialogue with us, and that dialogue consisted of moral obligation, responsibility, spirituality, personal life experience, family history, good, bad, and otherwise, whether her children wanted her to speak about their personal lives or not. But she also talked about why they shouldn't have made certain decisions in their lives as well as why they should have and why we need to learn from what those who have gone before us have done and didn't do. She was present for us. But she wasn't just giving. She also expected us to give. So listen here. If you got some money and you can be able to give, then you give toward this household. This household comes first. You see, I asked you for something. I don't care if it's a dollar, two dollars, whatever. If you have it, Please provide. I also expect you to cook, to clean, to do your part. Oh, you don't know how to cook and clean? Okay, well, you're going to stand right next to me and you're going to learn. You see, nowadays, you can take some time out and you can have these children learn from videos. And then I need you to execute what you've learned from the videos in the kitchen setting, in your bedroom. Oh, you watched a video on organizing. Great. I need you to start organizing your room. Kudos if you do it. Oh, well, am I going to get something? I'll think about it. But in the meantime, let me see what you can do around this house on a consistent basis. And then maybe we can talk about consistent income. But everything's going to be inconsistent as long as you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. See, you got to expect something from children. I'm hearing in the spiritual realm, expectation. See, you expect God to do God to do. Sometimes God's just going to give you a word of knowledge. He's just going to give you um, a prophetic word or he's just going to give you um, nothing but silence. Because I gave you a brain. I need you to use it. You've got videos, you've got resources, you've got everything that you need about anything that you need to do in order to make children productive members of society, responsible, respectful, and some of you all know the rest because you prayed and you asked the Lord. And the Lord says, okay, you asked me these things and I'm giving you the signs, the visions, the wonders, the dreams, and I'm even using people that you don't particularly care for or like to give you advice, wisdom. And yet you do none of these things, but I wish my kids would. Some people are headed toward divorce, and this is why the children need to be independent. Because when you got a parent who's running a household for on a part-time basis, they need to be able to do some things in that household, including cooking you a meal, so that when you get off of work, the meal is hot and prepared. Sit seated at the table, ready to rock and roll. Thank you very much. 
You're not just here to look to be uh, for me to look at. <laughs> because sooner or later, and this is what I've told all of my sons, sooner or later, you're going to have a family of your own. You're going to put all the burdens, huh, on a woman. Is that what you're expecting? Because I got four sons, in case some of you all don't know. And I am preparing them to be helpers. Okay? See, Adam wanted a helpmate, right? Well, if Adam wants a helpmate, he also got to be a helper to himself. And then, of course, to whoever comes into his life. It's, it's a two sides to every relationship right it takes two it's not one-sided she's not to be cooking and cleaning and washing walls and dusting and vacuuming and shampooing and organizing and buying gifts and doing all these things while you sit in front of a television screen or in front of your phone or in front of a computer all day every day while you grow in size and then still expect her to love on you when technically speaking, I mean, when we look at the scriptures, the man is to love his wife, right? Uh-huh. And so then you're going to expect her not to be looking a certain kind of way for you. I didn't marry this. I married that in that picture. Mm -hmm. So if you have such high standards about what she is to look like, you, my friend, need to make sure that you're the 10 that you're after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of you all, we got to raise these sons just like daughters some of you all you got to raise these sons accordingly like the future in mind not just right now and what tickles their fancy soldiers i'm hearing in a spiritual realm some did very well being soldiers in the three branches of the military excellent great but what kind of husband are you right all these resources out here everything that you need to be mentally physically and spiritually ready to handle all things and so with that you think about what you want to do in order to propel children into a direction where they are responsible individuals. They are not to be placed on a shelf, so to speak, <laughs> to be looked at, right? In their room where you walk by and now all you see is just this nice looking child. And this nice looking child should have responsibility should be able to communicate effectively. How do you get this sort of results that you're after? You've got to show, not just tell. There was a lot of telling that I grew up with. Tell, 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 talk, talk, talk. Demand, 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 command, command, command. But when I started becoming more observant, I noticed that, well, you've got to exemplify just what you're asking for. You're asking for things or you're telling us to do things. But let me see what type of help you're providing for mom for dad if you're showing that then it makes it easier for us to go ahead and do and so we saw we saw examples some of those examples were excellent examples and we use those examples later on in life when parenting our own children when communicating in marriage and so forth some of those other examples were not good examples they were actually toxic and could and could put some people into in jail or worse in their graves and so we learn to throw those things out your child's watching you your child's expecting more from you what will your child say god forbid if he takes you off this planet sooner rather than later 
What legacy do you leave behind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got to think about these things. And if God's not happy with us, what makes you think that children are going to be happy with us, whether in our presence or not? Lots to think about, lots to plan for. New year will soon be here, depending on the time that you're listening to this message. Let's stop spending so much time thinking about the next thing to buy, right? Let's spend more time in terms of where are we directing our children, how we are directing our children, what are we teaching our children, what are we leaving behind concerning our children. Those goals need to be set. Someone hasn't set any type of goals related to children. Others, it's been a long time since you revisited your goals. Matter of fact, these children <laughs> are not little anymore and you still got goals from when they were little. It's time to update, upgrade. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Thank you to those who have given to this channel and we do welcome those who have yet to give to this channel. Blessings to you.